Greetings. This is going to be on the fire series part 15, but it's going to be leading up to what happens when Christ returns in glory and the thousand year reign of Christ. Uh, now there is a group of people that are called preterists, and they say that Christ has already returned, and, um, well, let's take a look. One of the things they use is in chapter 17 of the book of Luke, and uh, let's see, verse 20. Now, if you don't know it, a Pharisee is a denomination of the Jews. All right, so Luke 17 and verse 20. And when he, Jesus, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, Noah Greek rendering of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they building, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Now, that's uh, this is the second shortage, shortest verse in the Bible. The shortest verse is, Jesus wept. So, uh, you know, some useless trivia for you. Uh, why remember Lot's wife? Well, because the angels grabbed Lot by the hand and dragged him out of Sodom, or oh, I think he was in Sodom. Yeah, Sodom. And dragged him out. And then what did Lot's, they were told not to look back. What did Lot's wife do? She looked back. Oh, I'm going to miss my house and my recliner couch and my microwave oven and uh, my, uh, yeah, you, you know, you, and my sleep number bed. I'm going to miss all that. And she looked back and she was turned into a pillar of salt, right? Remember Lot's wife. You know, when you leave the kingdom of Babylon, don't look back like the children of Israel did when they left Egypt and they were saying, oh, we missed the fish and the garlic and the leeks and the onions. Oh, we missed that. And all we got is this lousy manna to eat every day. Manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner. Every day, it's manna, manna, manna. Yeah. They were uh, murmuring and complaining, and uh, God had just about a belly full of them. And, uh, well, I hopefully you know the rest of the story. 
A lot of them died. Matter of fact, most of them died. So, All right, verse 33. Jesus says, Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Well, they're talking about people that are, you know, for the gospel. If you seek to save your life, uh, to keep for being killed for Christ, you're going to lose your life. But if you love the Lord more than you love your life, well, your soul will be, be preserved in that day. Uh, that's what they're talking about here. Verse 34, I tell you, in the night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Now, if you want to, you can read um, Matthew 24 and Mark 13. goes into more detail. I have beat that horse to death. Matthew 24. I've got an entire playlist. Matthew 24 revealed, if you're interested. Um, but this is talking about the events. Well, what happens when Christ returns? Now, what does it mean when it says that the kingdom of God cometh without observation? Now, I believe the answer to that is in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon the church. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing, a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, the Holy Ghost was given unto them. Now, the apostles were given powers, miracles. Uh, they were able to do some of the things that Christ was able to do, uh, like getting the lame to walk and what have you. And they were able to speak in languages, in tongues that they didn't know, to be able to preach Christ crucified and resurrected. So... Is that what it means, that the kingdom of God came without observation? That's what I believe. I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. But in Acts chapter 1, um, uh, let's see, Acts, the book of Acts, generally is attributed to uh, Luke, the physician. You've heard of the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So... Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And what was the, uh, I call it the, the three commandments. Um, somebody asked Jesus what the great commandment was, and he said, the, I'm paraphrasing, he said to love the Lord. And he said, the second is like unto it, um, love thy neighbor as thyself. And then he told the apostles that they were commanded to love one another. So basically, you got three commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor, and love those in Christ. Which, uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes that's really, really, really hard to do. Some people just make that really difficult. So, until the day he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. 
to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things that are pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He was taken up. He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, these have got to be angels, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, listen carefully, shall so, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he went up into heaven in a cloud. So shall, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So as he went up into heaven in a cloud, he's going to come in a cloud down to earth. Okay? I mean, keep that in mind. So, let's see. All right. Revelation chapter 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now, remember, people, God says uh, these things are going to shortly come to pass. Okay? All right, and skeptics and Bible haters will uh, use this and say, oh yeah, shortly come to pass. Well, it's been almost 2,000 years and we're still waiting. But in 2 Peter 3 and verse 8, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant. Ignorant means you don't know something. I am ignorant of brain surgery. Oh yeah. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. So, when, when Revelation 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant, things which must shortly come to pass, to the Lord, it's like a couple of days. You know, I mean, if it's Thursday and you say, oh yeah, the weekend's coming in a couple days, you know, uh, that's shortly coming to pass. You know, I mean, really. Um, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Did you know that you're blessed by reading and hearing the words of the Lord? Boy, yeah. yeah. How many, 
How many people in these um, corporate buildings that call themselves churches are, uh, I don't know, getting blessed? I don't know. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep, keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Ah, he's which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness unto the first begotten of the dead. Now there's people who argue and say, what do you, what's this? He's the first begotten of the dead. I mean, uh, Lazarus was raised from the dead. Um, I think it was the Elias raised somebody from the dead in the old Testament. Uh, you know, but the thing is Christ well, you know, he went, to, I did a whole study on it, but Christ, when he died, he went to the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, preached unto the spirits in prison, uh, Abraham's bosom, and then he was raised from the dead, and I believe he took all the, the uh, those in Christ, I mean, uh, well, all the Old Testament saints with him. But uh, the Bible doesn't give you a lot of information on that. And if you're interested in more studying that, write me an email or, or comment or something, and I'll, uh, I'll post the link to the... To the uh, but, you know, he's uh, the first begotten, begotten, and the first begotten of the dead. Just like he's the only begotten son of God, you know, begotten is a very exclusive term. And the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen to that, right? And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here's the punchline. Listen carefully. Verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Didn't we just read that in Acts 1? He went up into the cloud, and he's going to come back with the clouds. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Ah, have you seen Christ returned? Me neither. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. How about the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, this is one of the most important scriptures you could ever know. I mean, this is what's going to separate Christ from the Antichrist. And very, very few people in these corporate churches probably know this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's go to verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And, you know, that's a euphemism for being dead. Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 
Okay, so Christ is going to bring the dead with him, the dead in Christ. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, every every secret pre-trib rapture uh, has a shout, right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Ah, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, Jesus went up into heaven in a cloud, and he's going to come back down from heaven in a cloud with a bunch of people, a cloud of witnesses. And if you're not caught up together, if you're not, if you don't go up into the clouds to meet the Messiah in the air, the Christ, it's the wrong Messiah. So if somebody pops on, pops here on earth and uh, proclaims that he's the Messiah and we don't go flying in the clouds, uh, it's the wrong one. But just remember, every eye is going to see him. Every eye is going to see him. So, they might actually try to fake some kind of a coming of the Messiah. Uh, you know, they've got the technology now. They could do that. But uh, if you're not caught up in the air, per Paul, gee, I wonder I wonder if that's one of the reasons why uh, the these people hate Paul. Because he tells you right here, if you're not caught up in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Do they teach this in the pre-trib rapture churches? I don't think so. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. So, Christ is going to come from heaven with a cloud of witnesses. That's in Hebrews, right? We just read that. All right, Revelation 1-7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. So, keep that in mind. And we have to go up to catch him in the air. So, uh, the kingdom of God cometh without observation. Yeah, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit uh, descended upon the disciples and those that were gathered in the room. But has Christ returned? Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you he did. But uh, I didn't see him, so I say wrong that's but that's that's my opinion right all right so when christ returns this is what's going to happen revelation chapter 20 now there's a well let's read it and i saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that on the dragon, that old serpent. Why is he called an old serpent? Because he'd been around for a long time. What do you, uh, what do you think Eve was talking to? A, a, a snake? No. It was talking to that old serpent. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And there's people who will tell you that the devil and Satan is two different things. Uh, no. 
And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So there's going to be a thousand years of peace, where Satan is bound. All right? And set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he, Satan, the devil, must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned, reigned, R-E-I-G-N-E-D. That means ruling, not, not water from the sky. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So if there's a first resurrection... There has to be a second one. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. What's the beloved city? Jerusalem. And here's the punchline. And fire, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So after the thousand years of peace on earth, uh, Satan's going to be loosed. He's going to gather together an army. And uh, fire is going to come down from heaven and devour them. Now, let's take a look at something. All right, let's go to Matthew 22. Uh, Matthew 22, verse 24. Uh, let's, no, hold on. Actually, verse 23. Now, the Sadducees, uh, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which was a, it's a denomination of the Jews. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother should marry, shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife deceased and having no issue, no children, uh, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now, punchline, not all the angels are in heaven. Some of them were cast out, remember? A third, Satan. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead... Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? 
God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude, multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. You know, there's people that'll say that they believe in soul sleep, that when you die, that's it. But, I mean, Jesus said, I am the God of uh, Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. That right there puts a nail in the coffin to soul sleep. So, if in the resurrection, nobody gets married, uh, and we're talking the thousand-year kingdom here, uh, where, where do these people that go with, uh, well, let's read it again. Revelation 7, uh, 20 and verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, if there's no marriage in heaven and no kids being produced, where do all these people come from? Well, that's what this is going to uh, have. You know, this is what we're going to cover in this uh, this Bible study. Well, maybe the next one. I'm wondering if I should make this a part. Well, the first part. Uh, but to give you an idea, I believe that all the children that died in childbirth and those that were aborted and maybe children of a young age that what they say, what some people call before the age of accountability, I'm of the opinion that they're going to come back um, and be, well, I don't know about being reborn, but they're going to get, an, I think, a new body, and they're going to be trained in the ways of the Lord, and they're going to have a choice to either get saved or get burned up. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, verse 8, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, there are people that argue uh, annihilation, and there's people that believe in eternal torment. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't have the answer, but I says, it says here where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I don't know if that means everybody or just the beast and the false prophet and the devil. I don't know. Verse 11, and I saw a great, great white throne and him that sat on it from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Ah, now, believers that are in Christ are not going to be, uh, their salvation is not based on their works, but their position in the kingdom is. But the dead without Christ, their works, well, they're in trouble. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead, dead, dead and death and hell were delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Uh, this ties in with what I was telling you about the rulers. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. 
and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were, and they that were ready went in with him to be to the marriage, and the door was shut. Now, please don't ask me to explain this parable to you, because I, you know what, I, I don't, I, I kind of understand it, but, I, you know, oil in the lamp is indicative of the Holy Spirit, but how do you buy the Holy Spirit? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I kind of wonder if laying up treasures in heaven is indicative of that and, you know, bestowing your goods to feed the poor. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know. And I've had people ask me this and I don't know. So, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Boy, that's, I don't ever want to hear that words from Christ. I know you not. Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Um the gospel, right? And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. So... Verse 17, And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained Beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Boy, I want to hear those words said to me one day. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Slothful means lazy. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then 
at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Now, I don't get that because usury is forbidden in the Bible. So he's, you know, he's telling them, you'd have been better off doing something I said not to do than to just, you know, hide this talent in the earth. So verse 28, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was... I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. I hope you people listen to that. If I'm ever arrested under false circumstances, I hope you, I hope you remember me. Because, boy, I'm a target. If I had a lot more listeners, subscribers, I probably would, wouldn't have a channel. But because I've only got 6,000-something, you know, I'm like a little gnat that... Uh, that, that's all I am to them, a flea, a gnat. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and, or, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we, we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, Ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And if you, and, and I tell you what, read James chapter 2. I've, I've beaten that horse to death too. Um, good works are proof of your faith. I mean, that's just the way it is, people. You know, uh, when, when, if Christ asks you, why should I let you in the kingdom? Uh, Lord, because I believed in you. Well, you know, even, even the devil believes in God, right? Even, even the devil believes in Christ. You know, but his works are evil. And that's the difference between, you know, just believing is one thing. But, uh, 
you know, your works are proof of what you believe. All right, James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? In other words, what good is it? You know, they're naked in the winter and they don't have any food. And they're, they're freezing and starving. And all you're going to do is say, depart in peace. May you be warmed and filled. But, but you don't give them anything? I mean, what good is it? Verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Oh yeah, the devil believes in God. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? See, your works are proof of what you believe. You're not going to get into heaven because you did good works. No, 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 no. You're going to get into heaven because of the grace of Jesus Christ. That's why. But your works should follow. Good works will follow salve, true salvation. And that's just, you know, that's how it works. So, all right, well, I think I've rambled on enough. Um, next Bible lesson, we're going to study where uh, in, in the kingdom, you know, if people don't, if there's no marriage and no children in the kingdom, where did all those people that followed Satan come from? that Christ brought fire down from heaven and destroyed them. Well, that's going to be the next lesson. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, signing out. Stay close to Christ, people. Amen. <laughs>